Hello, Douglas County. Welcome to the Virtual Breast Cancer Symposium. My name is Lena Hardy, and I'm honored to be your host for this program. As many of you know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This month is dedicated to increase awareness on this particular disease and to raise funds for research on its cause, prevention, treatment, and hopefully one day a cure. It also offers information and support to those affected by breast cancer. In this program, we will hear from four incredibly strong and intelligent women who confronted this disease head on and came out on the other side as survivors. Here to share their experience, allow me to introduce Donna White, Brenda Grissom, Lynn Abbas, and Sherry Mathis. Hey there. My name is Donna Wentz, and I am a breast cancer survivor. I will have been um, free and clear of cancer for six years on October 30th, in just a few weeks. And I just want to let you know a little bit about my story. Um, nobody in my family had a history of breast cancer. It never crossed my mind. Um, I was diagnosed after finding a lump on a self-exam at the age of 39. Um, I had not had a mammogram yet because I was not old enough. Um, they started at 40 and I had was diagnosed at 39. So um, after I found the lump, I went to my gynecologist and asked her to, you know, see what she thought. She referred me to a breast surgeon. Um, I went through a conglomerate of tests from that point on. Um, test one week, results the next. It was just um, back and forth, back and forth um, for about six weeks. I had MRIs. I had CAT scans. I had... Um, uh, in a, a, mam a mammogram, which I had never had before. Um, and then I had to have a uh, mammogram where they actually did a biopsy during the mammogram. Um, after all the tests, it turned out that I um, was covered in tumors, um, breast cancer tumors in both breasts. Um, my lymph nodes already had cancer in them. Um, about six weeks after my diagnosis, um, I had a bilateral mastectomy. Both breasts were removed. All um, lymph nodes in my left arm were removed, and half of the lymph nodes in my right arm were removed. Um, I had a, a recovery from about for about six weeks, and then uh, started chemotherapy. Um, started chemotherapy on December fourth, right before Christmas, and um, my second chemotherapy treatment was on Christmas Eve, which is really strange. Um, but by then I had already started losing my hair. So my husband and I went and his mother is a beautician and we shaved my head and it sort of put me in some control. I, I didn't want to just lose my hair on my own because the chemo was taking it. I wanted to take it because I wanted to take it. So um, I went through four um, really tough chemotherapy treatments. They were every three weeks and um, they call it the red devil. Um, it's a red medicine that goes directly into your body. And so um, it was tough, but I was tougher. And so we, um, each time I had chemo, after chemo, I would go to the mall and walk the top of the mall and walk the floors, not in a hurry, just to push this stuff through my body and get it out as fast as it could could get out and I uh, went home and would rest a little while. Um, I did continue to work. I was out of work for a few days after chemo, but then I would work the rest of the time. Um, when I didn't go to the mall to walk, I'd go to the gym and get on the treadmill after chemo. Um, I, I found my motto was more mind over matter. I, um, I kept my, my head straight and wasn't going to let it, uh, things get the best of me. Um, I had two sons. I, I have two sons. And at the time they were 14 and 18. And I, I knew in my head that I may die, but they weren't going to know that I was going to die because they were going to say, mom looked like she felt great because I, I just wasn't going to let them see me laying around. And, um, 
feeling sorry for myself. So I uh, continued to work. My youngest son played baseball, never missed a game. Even if I was sitting in the car watching, I never missed a game. Um, I, when the summer, the following summer came around, I started radiation, um, was doing radiation every day um, after work. I would leave work about three or four o'clock in the afternoon, go to radiation and then go home. Um, that was tough just physically, just going to the doctor every single day to get radiation. Radiation only took five minutes, but it was um, it was every day. Um, and by that time I was continuing a, um, a treatment on chemotherapy, but it was a lesser medicine. It wasn't as tough on my body as the first round was. Um, so by February of 2016, which was about eight, about almost about 15 months after my first surgery, um, I had finished all my chemo res regimen and um, all my um, radiation was done. So I began the reconstruction process. Um, I chose to have a deep flap where they take your um, stomach tissue and recreate your breast. Um, it's in layman's terms, kind of like having a tummy tuck. So um, not the way I would have liked to have had a tummy tuck, but I did do that. Um, I had to um, have a couple of touch-ups um, done, nothing major. Um, I ended up having um, my tattoo, I had tattoos put where the nipples were. They, they, it's an amazing thing that they do. Um, the color and the, um, to make the breast look as normal as possible. And I, um, I, I'm very pleased with how everything looked, turned out. Um, I celebrate every year, um, being cancer free. Um, I find that actually October Breast Cancer Awareness Month is actually tougher on me than the other 11 months of the year, um, only because I think that it was the, the month that I had everything done. And um, I love Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but it's, it's emotional. Um, I love talking to women who have been diagnosed. I freely give out um, phone number emails. I love talking to women, um, helping them with anything they have, going through um, treatments or surgeries or making decisions, um, just giving them all the options that they have. Um, and I'm thankful that I made it through all of this uh, with family and friends and by the grace of God um, and lots of love and prayer. And I do owe all of my recovery and my healing to God and never take a day for granted. And um, so that's my story. Good morning. My name is Brenda Grissom, and I'm the founder of Gertrude's House Breast Cancer Support Group. I want to thank God for using me today. And then I want to thank uh, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, Council Chair for Douglas County. I want to co thank Commissioner Carton for having me and Christy for helping me out on this. Thank you for bringing aware to breast cancer to Douglas County. I want to start by talking about um, the statistics in Douglas County. In 2018, 51 out of 400 women were um, diagnosed with breast cancer in Douglas County. And then last year, 2019, 64 women of 1,400 women were diagnosed with breast cancer. I, I've been seeing a commercial running on television from um, Cancer Treatment Centers of America and it says cancer won't wait and you know what cancer will not wait and they also say don't put off the care that you need so that is i like to pick you on that that says please don't wait you know i know there's someone out there that is terrified okay you found a lump in your breast you felt a lump in your breast maybe yesterday maybe a week ago maybe even a month ago, maybe a year ago, but you are so terrified of, of the result if you go to the doctor that maybe you might have breast can cancer that you um, are terrified to go see the doctor. But early detection is the key to breast cancer. The earlier you get the diagnosis, the earlier you can be treated. I am a 36-year breast cancer survivor. 
I was diagnosed in 1984, and at that time, I was uh, 25 years old, just about to turn 26. And um, I have um, cancer in my family. It does run in my family. I'll talk a little bit about that later. But yes, when I found that lump in my breast at um, 25, about to be 26, it was December, okay, 1984. I went to the doctor and uh, he, you know, felt the lump, did a, a clinical exam. And then he sent me, he did a lumpectomy. And when he did the lumpectomy, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he pulled the lump out and he told his nurse that they were gonna send it over in a vial. Well, as soon as he pulled it out, he changed from sending it in this vial that had liquid in it to saying to her, we're going to send it over fresh. Well, now in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, what is going on? You know, why did he change it? So I knew something was not right. Well, five days later, they called me back in to see him again. And that's when the diagnosis came that I did have breast cancer. Okay, yes, I was terrified. When you hear those words that you have cancer, you do, you get terrified, okay? And I said to him, well, okay, when am I gonna die? He said, you're not gonna die. At that point, I said, okay, whatever it is, whatever we need to do, let's just do it. And um, I decided after um, he gave me my options, I decided to go ahead and have a lump, I decided to go ahead and have a mastectomy. And for those of you that do not know what a mastectomy is, that's when they remove the breast. So we removed my breast and um, I was stage four. And with that uh, came chemotherapy. Now, I'm not gonna say chemotherapy is fun. It is not fun at all. Third day, you're sick, you're vomiting, you just don't, just don't feel good. So here I was, uh, 24, 25 years old, sick, very sick. But you know what? I feel like the Lord just carried me through that because the whole time I was going through treatment, I just kept moving. He kept doing things. And then once it was over, it was just like he had just sat me down and said, go, you know, go on. Because I really just kept on moving. Now, different things happen for different people when they're going through uh, cancer treatment. Um, I'm not going to say it's easy. Like I said earlier, it is not an easy thing to go through. But you can do it. You know, you can do it. The key is early detection. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to go and get and get some um, treatment for it. Go and seek medical help. If you got that lump in your breast, go seek medical help. Okay, so three years later, here I was going to see my mom. She had had a aneurysm. Right before I left, I had had a mammogram. The mammogram results came back that I was fine. There was nothing there. I didn't feel anything in the self-exam. They didn't see anything on the screen for the, I mean, on the result for the mammogram. But right while I was out there seeing her within 30 days, I did my self-exam and there was a lump in my breast. I came home. I told my husband, take me straight to Kaiser. I have a lump in my breast. I got to Kaiser. They told me that they could not see me, <clears throat> excuse me because I did not have an appointment, excuse me. I did not have an appointment. So they told me they couldn't see me. And I asked where my doctor was. They said that he was in surgery. And I said, listen, I need you to go see Dr. Rahm and tell him I'm here and I'm not going anywhere until you all take this lump off my breast. Well, after going back and forth, back and forth, finally they said, come on, Dr. Rahm said to go ahead and take that lump out. When they took the lump out, I could see it in his face. I knew that it was cancer. The doctor that took it out, I could see in his face that it was cancer. Again, three days later, Dr. Ron called me and said, come on in and see me. I said, no, just tell me, I know I have cancer again. When do I start? And he said, no, come on in. Let's talk about it. Well, I go in. We talked about it. He sent me to see Dr. David Baer. This is Kaiser Permanente. Went to see Dr. David Baer and we you know, started my chemotherapy. So now here I am, I'm um, 27, about to be 28, and I'm having a second mastectomy. Again, chemotherapy, mastectomy was my treatment. And um, I went ahead and did the same thing. Let's just do it. 
whatever we're going to do, let's just do it. So I went ahead and had my breast, my second breast removed. All right. So um, <clears throat> I'd like to tell you all also to be your own advocate. If you feel something, you know, sometimes the doctor may say, you know, let's watch it. Okay, let's watch it. Take it out. Watch it over there. Not inside of my body. So be your own advocate. Say, you know, I don't want this in here. If you feel a certain way about your body, yes, listen to your doctor, but you know your body as well. So I would say, you know, have the lumpectomy and have the lump removed, and then they can test it. But again, listen to your doctor. The doctor, they know what they're doing. I'm just Brenda giving advice, you know, this from my personal experience. All righty. Um, okay, so then 10 years after that, I had um, the BRCA test done. The BRCA test is the breast cancer test. I had the BRCA1, so there's a BRCA1 and a BRCA2. I had the BRCA1 done. And uh, my OBGYN saw that I had had both breasts removed. And so he said, let's go ahead and uh, do the BRCA test. So we did the BRCA test and it came back that I had the BRCA1 test and something that was unidentified. So they didn't know what that was. So he said, let's go ahead and uh, remove your ovaries. So I said, okay, let's do it. Well, five days later, after five days uh, in the hospital, he called, came in and said, you know, everything looked fine. I'm sorry, let's go back. Everything looked fine the day of surgery. Five days later, I'm at home. He calls me and said, come in and see me, Bryn. And I said, uh-uh, just tell me when do I start? You know, I just knew that it was cancer when he called me. So I went ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, and did my uh, chemotherapy, had my ovaries removed and chemotherapy. I'm so sorry, I have dry throat. And did chemotherapy. And um, here I am today. <clears throat> um, now here I am. I'm, I have some notes because I don't want to forget something. Okay, so um, so here I am. Breast number one gone. Breast number two gone. Ovaries gone. Prior to me having my ovaries removed, um, my doctor tested me for. Um, tested my ovaries to see if they were still working because I wanted to have a child. So the doctor came back and told me, be grateful you're alive because you're never going to have children. I said, you know what? I know a man that can do anything and I am going to have a child. Her name is going to be Rodella Gertrude. Six years later, I thought I had a bladder infection, you all. And uh, I got treated for the bladder infection and they called me back in. And I said, hey, I'm still using the restroom a lot. Um, something's not right. I, maybe I need some more uh, medication for the bladder infection. And they said, well, you know, there's sometimes a kind of cancer that grows like a baby and delivers like a baby. So we want you to take an ultrasound. So I said, okay. So now I'm worried. You know, I said, here it is again. I have cancer again. And so I'm sitting in there crying, calling my cousin, saying, I think I got cancer again. I just don't want to do this again. And the lady says, come with me. I'm going to do your ultrasound. You know what, folks? She went down one side of my stomach, upside the other side. I sat straight up screaming to the top of my lungs. Thank you, Jesus. That's a baby. So guess what? I was four and a half months pregnant. And my daughter's name is Rodella Gertrude. So there's, a, of course, a bad side of having cancer. But then in my case, it was a shining light. The Lord allowed me to have this miracle child um, in my life. So I am so grateful for that. And then comes um, me and uh, some folks out here in Douglas County that were having some issues with um, rides and uh, finances and what that I knew of that had breast cancer. So I said, I'm going to, the Lord put it on my heart to start a support group. So the support group is called Gertrude's house. And what we do here at Gertrude's house, we're, you know, our motto is that we're just a sister away. And we want to be your battle buddies. And we are your battle buddies 24-7. You can call anytime, day or night, 
and we will talk to you about your cancer. If we need to get together, we have meetings. If we need to get together and stretch out on the ground, kicking and screaming until we figure it out, that's what we want to do. We really do want to be your battle buddy. Now we do, we provide rides. We do your copay. If you can't pay your copay, groceries, utility bills, child care, um, emotional support when you come to our meetings. And uh, that's what we do. So with me having this cancer came the opportunity for me to share with other women what I have been through, what other women have been through. We team other women up with each other. Uh, if you, I never had radiation, so if you're going through radiation treatment, I would team you up with somebody that's had that's going that has had radiation. If you're having chemo, I talk to you, and then I would team you up with someone else. So that's what we do here at um, Gertrude's house. Now, um, I want to make sure that I really don't forget something that I want to share with you. Uh, okay, self exams. Okay, I don't know if you know how to do a self exam, but just in case you don't know how to do a self exam, you take your three fingers just like this, and you never miss a finger. Okay, so if you're moving, you would move like this. So to begin, you would stand straight up and look in the mirror, take a look at your breast standing up, and you want to look for any changes in your breast okay look for changes do you see something that looks like the outside of an orange that would be something that's suspect so you would want to seek care for that if you see some lump you want to seek care for that okay now if you see any change in your breast you want to go and seek care for that change the next thing you want to do after you look in the mirror and look straight up you want to bend straight over and you want to hang your breast down and you want to take a look at those breasts hanging down. So now if after you check the breast hanging down, then um, you want to stand up and squeeze the nipple. If anything fluid comes out of that uh, nipple, you want to seek care. OK, then um, after you do that, then you want to take one hand. So we're going to say the left hand that's going to go behind your head. You're going to take those three fingers. Now, there's two techniques, the circular motion and then the up and down motion. So you're going to put that hand behind your head, take those three fingers, start here, all the way up here. This is breast tissue, folks, all the way down above the navel. That's breast tissue. Under here is breast tissue. All the way over here, this is all breast tissue. So you want to start up here. You want to go very lightly on the surface to see if you feel anything. Then you want to go deep, folks, and then you want to go really deep, as deep and press as hard as you can, as hard as you can stand it, because you never know there could be something there. So you want to go as deep as you can. And remember, you only want to move by one finger. So now this finger here becomes this finger, and you move down. Same thing, very lightly, a little deeper, and then as deep as you can stand it. Again, one finger going down same thing now guess what some man has walked away from the screen and and i want you to come back because i want you to know men get breast cancer also so you want to um also check your breasts men be sure to check your breasts okay so that is um the technique you use for checking your breasts and like i said you can go in a circular motion this way or you can go up and down Okay, that is your self-exam. And um, they tell you to do it around your cycle a couple of days before, a couple of days after. My um, recommendation is that you do it on your birthday. Okay, if you were born on the 10th, do it every month on the 10th. If you were born on the 15th, do it every month on the 15th. Because you know when you were born and you will remember to do your self-exam. That way, if you do it the same time every month, you will be able to recognize the changes in your breast. Okay. Uh, okay. We talked about um, being your own advocate. Okay. Now let's talk about um, genetics. Like I told you, um, I had the genetics test and I had the BRCA gene. In my family, starting at the top, my grandmother had breast cancer. All of my aunts had breast cancer. And then starting with me, I was the first one diagnosed. 
I was diagnosed and then all of my cousins have had breast cancer. So if your mom and your aunt or your mom, your grandmother, you know, if you see a pattern where there are several of you that several in the family that have had breast cancer, I recommend that you ask your caregiver, your doctor, what do you think about me having the genetics test? Okay, so that way you'll know. And in the genetics test, if you've been diagnosed with uh, breast cancer and your children have a 50% chance of being diagnosed with breast cancer. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean if you have six children, three of them might have breast cancer and three might not. That means each individual child has a 50% chance of getting breast cancer. Each one have their own uh, 50% chance. And they recommend that you have that genetics, have that talk with your children 10 years prior to your diagnosis. So my diagnosis was at uh, right at 25 years old. So my daughter and I started having that talk at 15 years old, okay? So that's what I would recommend you do, is go ahead and have a genetics test if you have multiple members of your family with breast cancer. I think that is just about it. Uh, remember Gertrude's house, we're just a sister away. Um, we're a nonprofit, 501c3. You can reach me at gertrudeshouse.com. And I'm just so happy to have had this chance to share with you my journey with breast cancer. And again, it's not easy. Don't be afraid. Don't be that woman that's sitting around and saying, I, I feel this lump but I'm afraid to go to the doctor. Please don't be that person. Don't be that man that says, I feel a lump here, but men don't get breast cancer. Please don't, please don't. Please be your own advocate. Go ahead, just like Cancer Treatment Centers of America says, they say, don't put off the care you need. Cancer, you all, will not wait. I love you and thank you for your time. Thank you, Douglas County. Thank you, Douglas County TV. Thank you, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones. And thank you, Jen Christie, thank you so much. I appreciate this time and I hope that I've done you all very well. Hey, I'm Lynn Abbas. Um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in July of 2018. Um, my tumor was a, a hormone fed tumor. Um, I had, because of that, I had surgery to remove the cells um, I had 30 rounds of radiation after I had four rounds of chemotherapy. Um, the, the thought of um, at the beginning, um, it's terrifying. You hear those words and it is terrifying. Um, before, you know, all the tests come back and you have to take this test and that test and um, and wait for the results to come back is excruciating. So um, if you ever have to go through something like this, uh, you just have to do things at your own pace. Um, make sure you lean on your friends and family to get through it because it can be um, really hard on your own. So, um, but don't, you know, you don't have to tell people you don't want to tell people and, um, you know, you just take one thing at a time. Um, now I'm on hormone therapy. Um, and I go to the doctor still regularly to get checked. Um, one thing that, um, you know, through all this, even before this, you know, you see, um, October is breast cancer awareness month. Um, and I always thought, you know, what exactly does that mean? You know, people have pink, they have these cups, they have shirts, you know, where does the money go when you purchase something? You know, if you're going to purchase something, um, look into if the money goes anywhere, if there's any money going anywhere. You don't want to just give money to, um, you know, to the sell, the sale of something. Um, you know, there are a lot of companies now who donate a portion of their sales if you purchase something or, you know, a portion of the sale the item does. But then again, what does breast cancer awareness mean? Um, you know, what, as I think of my story, you know, my, I, my tumor was one and a half centimeters. I mean, I should have been able to find that with a self breast exam. I had, um, I routinely went for my yearly mammograms and that's how they found it. Um, you know, as women, you know, we hear self breast exams, we do them every month and, you know, you just kind of lackadaisical about it. Um, but 
if you find it early, you may not have to have anything more than surgery. You may not have to have anything more than some surgery and you know four rounds of radiation. Everybody's story is different. We all have our own stories um, depending on where it's located, um, what kind it is, um, how you know the stage. But one thing is if one common thread or one common thing is is that if you find it early if it's detected early it's a lot easier to take care of and you will get through the radiation you will get through the chemotherapy it's just a snippet of time it's just a snippet of your life um, so you can move forward um, with your life uh, but you know self breast exams are very important you know the my ther my um, my surgeon um, asked me about self press exams and I said, um, yeah, yeah, I do them. But you know, so many people say, I don't know what to look for. I don't know what to feel for. It all found, feels lumpy. Um, so they don't know, they don't do it regularly. And she told me, my surgeon told me, it feels like a cobblestone street. It feels like it's lumpy like a cobblestone street and you're looking for a pebble. You're looking for a pebble on that cobblestone street. So this October, don't let it go by without telling your loved ones. One in eight women get breast cancer. Look around the room, look at your friend group, how many people are in it. One of those people are likely gonna get breast cancer. So tell your family members, all the family members you have, all the women and men, because men get it too, do self breast exams every month. We all take showers, baths, whatever. You're in there anyway, once a month, no skipping. Once a month, get it done, do your self breast exam. That's what saves people. It's going to happen and people are going to get it. But if you detect it early, that's what's important. Um, my, my surgery had to be bumped back because they needed to fit in a 14 year old girl who had breast cancer. How was it, how it was detected? I don't know, but tell your daughters, tell your wives, your sisters, all your friends do your monthly breast exam. That's what we need to learn this breast cancer awareness month. That's what's going to, help us get through this, not just to acknowledge that it happens. Yes, it happens. Yes, we know it does. One in eight women know that it does happen. Um, but be good to your friends and family and tell them to do that. Hi, my name is Sherry Mathis, um, and I would like to share a little bit of my journey with my breast cancer. Um, in 2014, the fall, my dear friend was diagnosed with breast cancer. And at that point, I got really involved with breast cancer awareness. I would do all of the fundraisers, the breast cancer walks, you know, anything that I felt like would bring attention to breast cancer awareness. Um, little did I know at that point that come that December, I would have been in the same boat as my friend. Um, December 30th, 2014, I was diagnosed with a rare type of breast cancer, which is called Paget's disease and melanoma on the same day. I had been going to a breast cancer specialist for over two years with issues with my left nipple. Um, I would explain to her, you know, the problems I was having as far as irritation, you know, um, just everything that was bothering me with it. You know, it was very cracked and stuff like that. And she would always tell me just to put some oil on it or some ointment, and then she would check me in six months. Um, so that went on for two years. Um, in December of that 2014, um, I had one of my, you know, monthly checkups or every six months checkup um, with a breast cancer specialist. And at the same time, she told me the same thing, you know, put some ointment on it and then come back in six months. And um, she told me at that point, she said, you know, if you're not comfortable with it at that point, we'll go ahead and do the biopsy. So, you know, she was my doctor, so I listened to everything she said. Well, um, in the meantime, I had had a spot that came up on my chest. Um, so the following day, I had an appointment with my dermatologist. So when the doctor came in, she you know, looked at the spot and she said, oh, we need to biopsy that, you know, as soon as we can. And um, so she did that. Um, and then she wanted to do a full body scan. And of course, you know, I allowed her to do that. Um, I also explained to her about the issue that I was having with my breast. So she took a look at that. And her uh, first comment was, we can't wait six months, you know, for the other doctor to get that done. We're going to go ahead and biopsy it today. Of course, you know, I went ahead and I let her go ahead and do that. Um, it was the week of Christmas. So I really didn't have anything on my mind when it comes to all of that kind of stuff, you know, worrying about it. You know, my mind was on Christmas festivities and, you know, the grandbabies and everything else. The following week, I had to go back to have my stitches removed. Um, still wasn't really worried about anything, you know, just wasn't even crossing my mind. 
So when the doctor came in, uh, first thing she said was, um, well, it's not good news. Was, you know, so of course I looked at her and I asked her, I said, well, which one? And she said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, they're both cancer. So as you, know, you can imagine, I just about fell to the floor because uh, I didn't expect to have one cancer, much less two, you know, diagnosed on the same day. Um, it was about a week later, they went ahead and they did the surgery on the melanoma. They said they needed to do that first before, uh, you know, we went into any further with the breast cancer. So once I was healed from that, it was about two weeks later, um, they went ahead and they did the first surgery on my breast. Uh, what they did was they went in and they took off like the top half of my breast and the nipple area as well. Uh, then they had me go through 10 weeks um, of radiation, um, which was a nightmare. <laughs> so uh, after that, you know, I saw a different breast cancer specialist at that point. And uh, that doctor was like, you know, you need to have a double mastectomy done um, to take care of this because it's so rare. We really don't know as far as it coming back and how that would work. So, of course, you know, I told her that was fine. Um, they explained to me at that point that I would not be a candidate um, for implants since, you know, I'd already had the radiation and they just were not allowed to do that. So they told me about a process and it was called deep flap. Now, this procedure was actually they would go in and they would do a double mastectomy um, and then this is all gonna be done on the same day. Um, it was a double mastectomy and then remove um, some tissue and fat from your abdomen and then actually conform and um, contrast your breast with that material. So I chose to go that route. Um, so my surgery lasted, I think it was like 13 and a half hours. Uh, Cause like I say, they had to remove the breast, take the fat and then, you know, build your breast from that. They had to actually go in and reconnect um, every blood vessel from your chest to the new tissue um, from your abdomen that they had placed there because they needed to keep everything live. Um, so, you know, I had all that done. Uh, and it was like, I think I had five more surgeries, which one of those was a surgery where they um, went in and actually created and made a new nipple for both of my breasts. And when that was um, healed up, I actually was got to have um, a tattoo artist do um, my areolas. So at that point, you know, I was feeling like a real woman again, uh, just glad everything was over. That process actually took almost three years from beginning to the end on that. Um, you know, during this time, I could not have made it at all without my family, my friends, and my coworkers. Everybody was amazing, you know, as far as just worried about me. I had so many people praying for me that um, it was just unbelievable. You know, you never know how important your friends and your peers, coworkers, and everybody is until you go through something like this. And it really, really, really um, makes you feel amazing. Um, you need to always have a good support group, someone to talk to. During this time, my friend that I mentioned earlier, we were, our surgeries were all about the same time. She was always one step ahead or one step behind me. So we really helped each other out during that time. Still to this day, I have people that will call me that's, you know, been recently diagnosed and just wanted to hear my side or what I've got to say. You know, I can never tell someone what to do. I can just tell them what I went through and then they have to make their own choice as far as the route that they would want to go. Um, you know, you like they say, the good support group, they will always get you through the good days and the bad days. And believe me, you will have both, and it's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to laugh. It's just, that's just the journey that you'll be going through. Um, just always stay positive. I was positive from the beginning to the end with this. I knew that God was in control and that he was going to take care of me. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my doctors actually had me talk to some of his patients he wanted them to see how I was dealing with my positivity and, you know, try to help them through it. He actually said that um, that's probably what got me through everything so fast. And then I healed so well, just being positive. You know, some things to think about, make sure you have your mammogram. Mammogram would not detect the kind of cancer that I had. Um, so know your body. You, nobody knows your body better than you would. So if you think something's wrong and the doctor's telling you one thing, 
keep following your heart. Go for it. Don't just take their word because you know the best for yourself. Um, I really, you know, I feel like the melanoma probably saved my life. Um, if it hadn't been for the melanoma, you know, who knows what in six months could have happened with the breast cancer. You know, we just don't know. So definitely God was in control of that. You know, he had control of that melanoma because he knew I needed to have the breast cancer um, taken care of. If you um, know something is wrong, just follow it. Do it. Um, looking back on this, I probably should have had, um, you know, a second opinion back two years prior to it. And if I had done that, I would have been way ahead of, you know, the process. Um, here's just some things to think about. Have your mammogram. Do your self-checks. Mammograms are really important, and the self-checks are as well. Um, know, like I say, know your body like we talked about before. Just always know that God is in control and he will take you through everything. I am now six years, almost six years cancer free and loving life. God bless all of you and have a great day. I like to thank each woman for their honesty, transparency, and willingness to share their experience with us to raise awareness. Breast cancer is diagnosed every 29 seconds around the world and in the United States, it's every two minutes. On behalf of the chairman, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, and District 3 Commissioner Cherenia Carthen, we ask the women and men of Douglas County to stay informed, stay healthy, and get your screening today. Thank you for watching.